Tired of answering the same questions over and over again from your students? Do you wish your students had guidance even when you're not around? Meet EdCafe AI's chatbots, your AI-powered teaching assistants tailored to your classes. In this video, I'll show you how to set up an AI chatbot quickly and easily, plus how to make it a little bit smarter, more personal, and ready for real classroom needs. To create our chatbots, we're going to be using the tool EdCafe AI. EdCafe is a platform built for teachers to create AI-powered teaching tools like flashcards, lesson plans, slide decks, grading helpers, and so much more. The chatbots you create are custom built by you to support your students in and beyond the classroom. Because let's face it, as a teacher, you deal with endless questions after class, repeating the same instructions over and over again, and limited time to give every student personalized support. The EdCafe chatbots can help with this by giving students 24 seven access to help from any device, personalized guidance on your materials, and a stress-free learning environment that they can explore at their own pace. To get started, head to the website edcafe.ai and sign up and create your account for free. Let's start by creating a simple chatbot. When you're in EdCafe, you can click Create New and click on that chatbot tool. From there, you only need to describe what you want the chatbot to do, and EdCafe will help you generate that chatbot. So in our example today, we want a chatbot to help students review key historical events, timelines, and important figures from World War I. We can add anything else additional. For example here, let's say we also want this chatbot to help students with their essays. That way they can get a little bit of help organizing their ideas, suggesting any key points to include and to encourage critical thinking. From there, we can click Create Chatbot and EdCafe will come up with instructions that are provided to the chatbot on ways to behave. So you can scroll through these and review, and these are all editable, so you can take your time doing that as well. But that is the whole process of creating for now with a simple chatbot. So we can just save it here, give it a quick name, and then you can save it in your EdCafe AI library. That way you have easy access in the future. Once it's saved, now we can assign it and share it with our students. That way they can interact with this chatbot. So you'll see this assign key here. We can click on that and you guys can embed it into your LMS or Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. Otherwise, just copy that link and you can share it with them. They can paste it in any browser and start to use. So if we just type in a name here, students can then begin interacting with the chatbot. So they can type out any messages. They can review the EdCafe chatbot response here by reading it, or they can also listen to that audio here. In addition, students can also record their own audio to send to the chatbot. I'm not sure how World War I ended. Once that's submitted, you can also see that it provides a transcript of that audio and that response there. Besides the text and our audio, students can also upload files. So let's say uh, we have a example paper here. So I'll pull it up so you guys can see. So we have a 500 word student paper here that can be submitted. Let's ask if the chatbot can review and give some feedback. So now our chatbot has reviewed that file and given us some strengths and weaknesses here for us to improve our paper. Back over on our teacher side here, teachers can actually review the students' chats. So in this view chats button here, you'll be able to get a quick preview of all of the chats that your students have done and see their last message there. And you can click into this to be able to review that whole file. So you can see all the messages that both the chatbot and your students have sent. And if any audio is there, you can give it a listen in addition to being able to view any documents that the students upload as well. So as we can see, these responses can be quite basic. Let's go ahead and update our chatbot to make it a little bit more personal in three different ways. So if we go back here and click edit, the first way that we want to update it is let's not provide students with those answers. Instead, in our response guidelines, we can add that we want our students, or the chatbot, excuse me, to not give the direct answer. So ask for follow-up questions and guide the students in comparing events across those time periods for World War I instead. So now if we save this and if we test out our chatbot, and we'll ask it that same question that we did in the beginning of how did World War I start? 
we can see that it did not provide the same amount of information like it did last time. It asked us some different questions, but still has a little bit of that intro. That way our students can think a little bit more critically. So along with these kinds of instructions about guiding the students instead of giving the correct answer, we can also update the chatbot to incorporate more of a specific tone of voice or other personalization features. So back in our edit tab again, in our best practices for interaction, we can add that we want to give a positive greeting and provide positive reinforcement whenever students are provided a correct answer. So let's go ahead and save this one. And if we go back to test it out. And when we answer the question correctly, we'll get that good positive feedback from the chatbot as well. And our last way to make this a little bit more personal is to actually add in knowledge that your chatbot can refer to when interacting with students. So for this last time, let's go back to our edit. And now we wanna click on this knowledge tab. In this knowledge tab, you can upload any kind of resource. You can upload a website along with PowerPoints, words, Excel files, images, PDFs, or even paste in some text. So for example, here we have this website. Maybe we want to add this as knowledge that the chatbot can refer to. So let's just copy that. And over here, we can add that web page just by pasting that in. And now it's part of that knowledge that the chatbot can refer to. In addition, I also have a PDF here about World War I with some different activity sheets and information that we've used in class. And then lastly, a PowerPoint file that is used in class. That way, the students know and are familiar with the information um, that is being given and the chatbot can refer to all that information that you've given the students as well. So we can simply go ahead and just drag and drop our files into here. And then lastly, I just wanna demonstrate how you can also add in some text. So maybe we only want like a specific paragraph from this website. If we copy this in our add knowledge, you can also do add a text note and you can say, just do a website note here and then paste in that text. And then the chatbot can also refer to that pasted in text as well. The last piece that you can refer to is this knowledge limits. So if you want to set the chatbot to only use that information of our uploaded knowledge and those files when interacting with students, you can toggle that check mark right here. So these were three different ways to make your chatbots a little bit more personal so that way students are getting the best information possible. Next, I have three different unique chatbots to help give you some ideas and start that creative thinking process on how to use chatbots in your classroom. For more ideas on using these chatbots in your classroom and ways to incorporate, take a look at the video linked up above and down below. But otherwise, the first chatbot I have for you guys today is the class schedule assistant that can be used by both students and parents. This is to help them answer any questions about academic planning or class times, schedules, due dates, and exam schedules and things like that. So you can ask the chatbot to help with that. It will come up with your instructions. And then also you can add in any knowledge that you want students to refer to like a syllabus. So we can take a look here. We have um, information about class times and different things like that. And if we go back, we can take a look at a student chat here and that asked about final exams and was given that date and some key points that is all pulled from that document. If a student asks a question or a parent that isn't included in the document, as you can see here, the chatbot did say to reach out to the teacher or the school's administration. So you know that the chatbot isn't hallucinating or giving the students any wrong information. Our second chatbot idea that we have here is actually a PSLE chatbot, which is a, an exam in Singapore for your primary six learners. So it's helping them prep for that oral exam by engaging them in different conversations um, with an image here. That image looks like this. So the chatbot will actually Let's take a look at one of the conversations. Ask the students about the picture. So open up your book, take a look at that page. And that's all because the teacher has also uploaded that knowledge here at the end with the image and then also with that information that it is on which page and things like that. Our last chatbot that we have is for SEL. This is to help students support any with dealing with stress, anxiety, low motivation, and inquiring about their feelings and offering different strategies, all tailored to that student's specific emotion. So if we take a look at that chat here, 
we can see that Wesley said he was quite tired. So the mood mate has provided lots of different strategies that he can use to help with that situation. I hope these three ideas got your creative juices flowing and you guys can use them to start creating chatbots for your very own classroom. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to get started with Ad Cafe at adcafe.ai and hit that notification button and subscribe button. That way you stay updated with all of ClassPoints and Ad Cafe's latest videos.